Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take oh, that midweek break, maybe talk about some of the things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant and Pedro Mateus. Hello. We survived another <laughs> week. I don't know yes. why I said that, but what's the deal? He's like, it's, it's a day after day at this point. It's another day. Let's get up and do that thing we do. Yay. I mean, m- less people are leaving the house now, so it's you'd start- think that the starting random to- accident. <laughs> it's starting to get to me a little bit. After- See, I was well prepared for this. I've been working at home for um, like seven, eight years. And outside of like, I have to go like, once a week and do work thing. And that's it. But it's starting to wear on me with just like, I can't pop off to a bar or something like that. Watch some live music. It's just not an option. Like, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, things could be worse. But <laughs> what's everybody up to? Pedro, I know you that uh, you are the destroyer of keyboards. Uh, not really. Uh, the old keyboard that uh, Ozone Strike Pro. <laughs> the space bar is flaky. It just stops working at random points. <laughs> so I went to Amazon and it's like, okay, let's look for some cheap keyboards and i saw this one from uh mars gaming and it claimed it has red switches and rgb and it's like 25 pounds with the portuguese layout it's like okay cool that that I, i'm on board mm-hmm. with that that's a lot of faith this, man that's a lot yeah, of faith this, <laughs> to the connoisseurs out there does this sound like a red switch to you Not to me, it doesn't. <laughs> blue switch all the way. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like uh, one of the cheapy uh, Chinese blue switches, which I'm guessing is what those are. They're just dyed red. So that was my first yeah. question. Yes. Were they technically red? <laughs> yes. Uh, I actually pulled one of the keycaps off. It's like, well, okay, played. they are well painted played red. <laughs> 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 oh man well I, i'm sorry that you got us were, were you going for like slightly less annoying and the sound uh, or? yes uh okay. it, the red switches yeah. like the one that one mm-hmm. um are um they're linear activation and they're not extra clickly the bit clickly clickly, clickly. <laughs> hey we got a new show just, but, uh just bang ass <laughs> show title <laughs> yes clickly uh, it's just the when the, the sound is just when you bottom out the switch that's the tech tech that doesn't make the extra click like that one does <laughs> so yeah um why, why don't you just buy one of these old cheapo microsoft <laughs> because that costs about six times as much as that one. <laughs> Listen, man, I can paint Five. it red. I can put red switches on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. The, the big selling point of that one is like, oh, full RGB and $25, uh, $24.99. Okay. Don't worry. That's not the only keyboard talk we have in the show. Joe, no. How's it going? Aww. You got something pink. Yes. Oh, yes. So, Snack. um, yeah, my pink XLR cable that uh, Artharen got me last week is is I am using it right now. It's pretty. You'll see it in my bigger shot. <laughs> so, um, I had actually a really wonderful Sunday. We we had our Linux Chicks LA uh, Jitsi meetup on Sunday. And it was really great to just uh, talk with our community and start making plans for upcoming meetings. And so we're getting ready to do something special for the International Women's Day on March 8th. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's uh, <sighs> Last March, we couldn't do it because of, you know, uh, pandemic was coming <laughs> and uh scale <laughs> so this time we can focus on it because we don't have scale which is depressing but we will have scale next year <laughs> scale so yes <laughs> yesterday i'm like chilling out and i get an email that it's like hey vin don't you want to crawl up on top of your house mm-hmm. yes am i smart enough not to <laughs> kind of <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can say that I've been up there a couple times. Um no, I got like the um Starlink invite. No, admittedly I'm just gonna let nice. it sit for a while, but I just want to let everyone know winter is coming. Bandwidth is coming for 
those of you who know, I'm in Athens, so I guess that strip of the world, you know, if you want to draw some lines, that's going to be in orbit. And just very excited about that space internet and all that fun stuff, especially for people who have in underserved areas. You know, I did the thing on the Reddit. I'm like, hey guys, it's coming to these coordinates. And like somebody that is roughly like 30 mm-hmm. clicks down the road from me is because oh, you can get nothing. He's got three megabit DSL. That's it. He's paying like 60 bucks a month for it. Yeah. <clears throat> so that that's a game changer for people like that. And I, I don't want to get any yeah. way on that because I'm sitting here. I was like, oh, no, my options are gigabit. No. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be very cool. Also, <laughs> this was fun. I turned into a little bit of a challenge. If you kind of keep track of what I do in Discord, and I'm like, oh, I, try, I try to be a little sherry. I picked up some of these because I wanted to see if I could put together a 10 gigabit fiber network uh, for under 50 bucks. Turns out shh, I did. Um, I got the video for you. It's up for patrons right now if you want to take a look at it with a parts list. And uh, that's two solar flare nicks. We got the cable, transceivers, and everything. Even if you're just like curious, like, hey, man, I, I want to get, you know, 10 gigabit from this computer to this computer. This will take care of it. And again, for under 50 bucks with an asterisk on it, if you need a full height adapter, it's going to be like an extra $8. But I didn't. I was uh, a little worried. You know, I'm not familiar with solar flare when it comes to optics or the. Finisar transceivers again. I was just bottom barreling this out of curiosity. Everything worked. Linux, Linux is going to Linux. Uh, it'll make you feel good if you go and read the reviews for like the solar flare cards and watch people on Windows 7 and 10 just screaming, like it will never work. It, I can't you put it in Linux, it's done. So Go play with that. That will be made public uh, with the parts list. I think it's going out Friday for everyone, but if you want a little snack pick, it is there and available. I had fun nice. time making that. But <laughs> the big news this week is sound doesn't work on Linux, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may be true, but uh, no, this one actually comes directly from another planet. Well, it was sent from here to another planet. It's the Perseverance. I almost got through that world. Almost. Uh, correct. I was going to give you that uh, one. Yeah, the Perseverance is uh, now on Mars, and inside it is a teeny tiny little el- uh, helicopter drone uh, type of situation with a camera, the Ingenuity. And those two... I, as I'm sure anyone who was uh, paying attention to the uh, news this week uh, will know that they're running Linux. And we've already seen video of the uh, little helicopter. It's got uh, three major sensors that it relies on in order to be able to fly around. And they have safe places uh, installed so that even if one single sensor goes out, it immediately goes back to the perseverance in order to... You know, okay, run diagnostics, what's happening? And yeah, it, they're running Linux. Uh, they have uh, the stack is completely open source. And the way that they uh, put it in the interview from um, IEEE Spectrum here was, uh, this is the first time we'll be flying Linux on Mars. We're actually running a Linux operating system. The software framework that was uh, we're using was one developed at JPL for uh, CubeSats and instruments, and we open sourced it a few years ago. Now, I could point out the sanctimony in that statement alone, but this is actually a genuinely nice thing to have, uh, especially mm-hmm. for all the creative people out there who are you know, playing around with drones and other stuff, and they want to get a feel for what it is to actually send stuff to another planet and the kind of software that you need to account for all of that. This is amazing. This is awesome. This is incredible. (laughs) Yay, penguins on Mars. So what's also cool is on Monday during the NASA Mars 2020 Perseverance Rover press conference, The imaging engineer said that there is a compact Intel, a compact uh, Intel-based Linux box on the rover as well that uses FFmpeg to compress the video for their imaging. So that was really cool. And he actually stated, thank you to the open source community for allowing us to use your amazing software. Yeah, kudos indeed. 
And, you know, Linux has been used for Mars rover development since the very first one was launched. And NASA has been using Linux for years here on Earth and on the space station. But it is nice to see our favorite OS and its penguins marching on Mars. Yay. I don't know. I wonder, like, um, <laughs> we, we don't want to send penguins to Mars because you saw what happened when we sent the killer whale to the moon, man. It wasn't. <laughs> well, they'd be okay with the cold, that's for sure. It, it, it might it, be a little too cold, but. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't breathe, but. Um, it, yeah. the, the lack of water f- to move around properly. And also- <laughs> now, yeah. this is kind of interesting. I mean, in all seriousness, it is. I mean, this is the first rover on Mars not powered by VX Works. So that's been NASA's go-to for the operating system yeah. for the rovers. And actually the first one, mm-hmm. uh, Pathfinder, was running some cyclic executive named whatever they wanted to name it. Probably YOLO, knowing NASA. <laughs> uh, but one thing I want to know is, have, is there any plan in place? Because we've already junked up um, orbit around this planet. Like, hmm, we're running out of space. Let's start dropping some junk on other planets and leaving it. <laughs> Especially when we're doing things like, oh, what's it powered by? Uh, nukes. <laughs> to be fair, uh, that's some very expensive junk that we're currently sending out to Mars. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was it? Two probes that uh, just disappeared? Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> After we, we, they made contact? They've cratered a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there well, were two. We still uh, have- <laughs> I remember, but yeah. <laughs> we still have to retrieve lots of stuff from Mars, too. <laughs> from Mars and, I'm um, sorry, the moon. <laughs> from the Apollo series. Yeah, th- there's, a, there's a lot of stuff still on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make the joke. I just don't want to deal with the comments, Pedro. <laughs> anyway, the moon's flat, so it'll be easy to sweep it off. Oh, no, oh, no, geez. no. See, the other no. planets are around because they have been observed to be around yeah. it's just the earth Not that the hasn't earth. apparently <laughs> <laughs> oh man there's that questionable person who's like are they choking or not hmm. so check this out uh one of our long national nightmares after the death of flash uh it's been electron um oh, not yeah. necessarily <laughs> bad technology in itself but it's like hey do you want a simple text editor yeah well, here's a side of the browser <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you like a simple text editor? That'll be uh, one gigabyte, please. And uh, this, well, this is Tori. It is attempting to combat that in a, uh, well, it, in a very interesting way. Basically, they're packaging everything that you need in order to have the same sort of uh, application development that you currently get with Electron. You get your web front end uh, for a native uh, application that you would run on a regular operating system, be it PC or in phone. But they want to make that as small as possible. And one of their big selling points is, yeah, with Tori, you can make your app about 600k kudos finally that uh, (laughs) that certainly took a while because yeah i was looking at the size of discord and the size of um Mm. what's the other one slack (laughs) uh and teams and it's like oh that's a 1.2 gigabyte after being installed just for a chat app and that's before you even start downloading all the dang memes that's massive and the ram usage also tends to reflect that so yeah no i I, i'm very much down with the proper bundling of everything and making use of all the features that the operating system already provides just having the bits that need to for the application to run no man you're just over exaggerating <laughs> everything i mean i listen i i, I, I have that 32 do. gigabytes of ram with a thread ripper so i can have discord and slack open so uh with two chrome tabs <laughs> i didn't say that i'm not but this is kind of interesting now one thing i did notice that i mean it relies on web view and so that can be a little problematic but that's not something you can overcome in the future they're planning a bunch of things you know like a rust based cli and it's going to have to support keyboard Very shortcuts nice. cli update or vs code execution yeah. and uh-huh. um transparent windows because that's needed but something like this i think for the future not again uh, electron by itself is not a bad technology but it makes it too easy for kitchen sink implementations of for the smallest little thing 
And they even say, hey, you can do an application. A whole this, browser like, for a single thing. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Can have like 600K applications yeah. in this size wise. Mm -hmm. Oh, that you have my attention. And do you really feel sometimes that we're just trying to make Java again, again, and again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the promise. You got to ship anyway. the whole bundle. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone's credit, I'm trying to get it right. Yeah. So I, you know, as I was reading through the web page, you know, it, this is really awesome being able to build desktop app applications with a web front front end. It's so much simpler and faster than than uh, the time consuming time it takes to you know compile on on the ground floor development. So on the back end. So I was really impressed. It's nice to have another, another, uh, way to do this other than electron <laughs> for sure. Yep. So one of the <laughs> things we've talked about a couple of times is simply big a, not simply a large majority is because it was called bloopy. Yes. yes. <laughs> because we're adults and Ploopy is a fun word to say when you can legitimately just like, hey, let's talk about Ploopy. It's an actual brand of things. Right. Ploopy. <laughs> There's been an update in the realm of Ploopy. Yes. <laughs> the, okay, let's see. What are we going to talk about this? All right. This, this is the Ploopy Nano. It's exactly what you would think. It's a Nano Ploop. No, but it's a pure trackball experience. And I'm kind of interested with this because, you know, hey, it's a uniball. And um, I enjoy projects like this of, well, I guess you could say questionable use, uh, mm -hmm. maybe. But uh, yeah, see that blurb right there at the top? I never realized just how edgy. Much Blue edge. <laughs> so much edge, Pedro. Uh, if you want a trackball and nothing else, man, this is, this is it. This is done. But you can get the kit. Because, you know, this is strong, like, hey, you make it yourself uh, if you want the, what's that, like thirty nine ninety nine for the kit. Now, mm -hmm. something I really want to point out, if you're thinking about playing around with this, which could turn this into just like, oh, okay, this is going to be a little bit of a toy, because it uses roller bearings, and what, well, what's the difference? I don't know. I don't have to care about bearings in my life, and it's going to make some noise when it's rolling around compared to, mm -hmm. you know, something like uh, an Elocom Huge or anything like that. But it pairs well, you know, if you have like a loud track or you, uh, here's what I'm thinking, Pedro, it would go really well with your extra loud keyboard. Then you can make even more noise. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> then I could have Nori uh, grab two things and hit me with them at yes. once. Yes. <laughs> but if you get her a ploopy, you, you know she's coming. <laughs> Well, I think this would be the ultimate trackball gerbil for Ven, <laughs> definitely. And Ven, you can just put a little cushioning around it, so you, a little dampening, so you don't hear all the noise. Here's the, here's the largest problem: is this is the um, Elecom huge. This is their super gigantic, like laughably big one. There's my hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge. Right. You need to, it, yeah. I can still Poopy's do too small. <laughs> I would lose it. <laughs> yeah, and I can imagine because the ball, the way that it's resting, if you were particularly, you know, not particularly paying attention and you just reached over for it, like, and there goes the ball. <laughs> Dude, here's my, here's my issue. That ball, that ball mm -hmm. in an office environment at home, perfectly safe. That ball in an office environment, way easy to get out and throw. <laughs> would get stolen, yeah. Well, B, yes. Hidden. <laughs> yes. If not stolen, at least hidden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Replaced with cheese. You know, things like that. <laughs> I did have a look at their shop to see what other kind of things they offered. And I looked at their mouse. They just call it mouse. Yeah. And that's 140 Canadian for something that made my left hand hurt. Just looking at it. Uh, no. <laughs> I like this. 30 bucks. Go play with it. Um, plans are all available. I mean, you can just download it, 3D print it. And, yep. uh, yeah. Good deal. Probably not as cool as what System76 has been working on for a few minutes. Um, quite a long time. They're like, we're going to reimagine the keyboard. And 
They made well, a keyboard. here it is. At least the uh, first of the design files have been open sourced. Uh, everything is available. You can go look for it in um, System76's GitHub page. It's all there. And yeah, right now they're just design files. But if you have access uh, to PCB printers, uh, the, someone that who who could just make the caps and the supporting structures and everything else you could get started on making one i did have a play around with their um uh layout editor because they do have a functioning layout editor where you can specify exactly where the keys would go where everything else and like the spacing of the keys everything i caught myself about halfway getting the <laughs> Portuguese uh, layout all done is like I'm not I'm not gonna be buying one of these for any time soon so yeah I'll uh, I'm gonna just uh, stop right now but Aww. that 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 is impressive <laughs> <laughs> uh, I definitely am buying one of these um, I love and use 75% keyboards and have having a customizable one that fits my typing style would be so very helpful. And also because I have small hands and button reach is an issue with for me with larger keyboards. So, you know, I'm constantly uh, enjoying using uh, different brands of 75% keyboards because of that. And, you know, this could be a problem for Pedro as well. But maybe not. <laughs> less so, yeah, less so for me because I have the mouse on the left, so yeah, that doesn't really bother right. me. And I do like that's the one thing I don't mm -hmm. like about sixty and seventy percent keyboards. I like my numpad. I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do too, man. I'm so I don't, I don't need to have it. <laughs> yeah. Portable numpad, the rocks. <laughs> so uh, you got to look at this. Um, Mechanical, electrical, firmware, software designs, all available to anyone that wants them. Go to new system 76. Um, big win there. Now, the chassis license CCBYSA 4.0, the PCBs GPLv3, each switch mm -hmm. is an RGB LED, Pedro. You should be so excited. Hey, rainbow vom <laughs> vomit for the win. <laughs> Addressable <laughs> RGB uh, rainbow peer, yes. Mm. <laughs> I, I applaud System76 on this uh, for, I'm going to have to say, the market it's for. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. People it, are going to eat that up. <laughs> they're, they're going to have fun time with it because, I mean, it blinks, it makes noise, it hurts your wrist, and requires a wire. Everything I don't look for in a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Can get one of those, well, one of them. <laughs> yeah. Respect. Yeah, you, you mean like the integrated one I have right here? Like <laughs> yeah, no, gaming keyboards don't have them, unfortunately. So Pedro, there's no <laughs> such like... thing as a gaming keyboard. A eh? let me just go ahead and uh, dispel you of that marketing myth. Um, I mean, people keep calling them gaming keyboards. I know I'm because just, uh... they can charge an extra thirty percent, and people buy them. <laughs> I mean, this is that uh, again. Good on System Seventy Six for making everything open. Fantastic job on that. One thing I was curious about is like, why didn't, uh, if you're looking for something like maybe a split keyboard, ergonomic is kind of a big thing. And even if you like the clink, clicky, clicky nonsense and the RGB stuff, uh, go check out Kibo. They've been doing this for a long time. Uh, split mechanical keyboard kits, other goodies, build yourself, Pedro, build us some keyboards, man. You can do crazy stuff, reasonably priced. You can even get the stick. I know it's as dangerous as it looks. It's sold out. <laughs> I did have a look at your link and it's like, ooh, the stick, that could be sold out. Never mind. Don't worry about it. There'll be a link in the show notes. And uh yeah, good job, System 76. You know what? We're Yay. about to talk about Gnome and Jill's gonna do it. Then Pedro's yeah. going to pull his little kitty claws <laughs> out and get I can get many options this week, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is really awesome news. The GNOME Software Package Manager has a redesign in the works. And OMG, it is time for a GNOME software overhaul for sure. This uh, version of it looks really clean and well organized. And it should be a bit more memory efficient <laughs> and not as clunky. <laughs> and I love, I actually am really loving, there's a vertical left panel with the menus now. Because uh, it makes more sense for the design of GNOME. So I was just 
really, really happy about this. We've been waiting for GNOME Software to, to have a, an update for a long time. And we knew it was coming because they've been, you know, talking, the GNOME Foundation has been talking about it. So I was, uh, it, 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 it's coming soon. It, it, it may or may not be in uh, GNOME uh, 40, the 40 release, but it is coming and it is in the works. Yes, and the the my biggest issue with uh, the GNOME Software Center, it was always how slow it was, because <laughs> if you've ever used the package kit GUI, that slow, the uh, Ubuntu Software Center, that one was even slower, but yeah, the GNOME <laughs> Software Center was passable, but it was always very slow, and there were some yeah. distros that tended to make that the default, even if you weren't using GNOME specifically, looking at you, Fedora. Uh, and yeah, basically, first step was get rid of it, uh, and if we're dealing with Ubuntu, install GDebbie and Synaptic. If it was Fedora, just install uh, Yamex DNF, and you got yourself package manager, mm -hmm. package installer, away you go. Uh, I was actually surprised because for once, KDE actually did something right before GNOME did. Yeah, <laughs> true. Basically, I can't think of an option that any other uh, instance of this ever happening, which was a KDE Discover. That actually became useful as a software center slash package installer. That, 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 that was impressive. Um, Pedro, go ahead and bounce your room one time while we close out this little bit here. Uh, is where yeah. are we at exactly with uh, software? Pa so this is just like the GNOME software. I'm wholly unfamiliar with this, Jill. So I got to ask: Is yeah. this how you just is it like the default way to install software? Yeah, through GNOME? it's the yeah, it's the the d default software uh, package manager um, that uh, you know a lot of people use. I actually prefer Synaptic. Cause, yeah, because uh, yeah, <laughs> I like a. Everyone much, does. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it doesn't blink enough, Pedro. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, for Clearly. for a new user, you know, their first impressions. You know, this is the the very first uh, software packager that new users would be using on GNOME. And, Which was a you terrible know, experience, was, and that's part horrible. of the reason why a lot of people don't <laughs> like Linux. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, sometimes you got to sit back and think about it. Um, does Synaptic work? Because I've been using it for a decade. Well, how oh, man, Synaptic's Synaptic ten years old at least, right? No, oh, yeah, at least, yeah, at least. I don't want to go back 90s. too far back. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I was thinking like new users uh, when you're coming into it. What are the things that is infinitely like, confusing is like gnome having a does kde what does kde have for like software discover 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 is beautiful so if you sit down and mm -hmm. play with one uh, is that going to translate to the other no no mm -hmm. and you get somebody like me i'm just going to like okay this is where your command line is this is how you type in <laughs> uh, you like it or not that it seems to be the common running theme <laughs> Between desktop environments, distros, yeah, that's well, CLI. <laughs> when I'm making videos, if I'm making guides or anything like that, I have to do it on the command line. It doesn't matter because that's the one way I don't. I, I just remove the desktop manager equation. Abstraction. <laughs> yeah, like you type this in and you don't fat finger it like I do. It'll work. If it doesn't, learn to type that. Or if you just are lazy like me, alias stuff. And like you know what I meant. So go ahead and run the command. <laughs> YouTube DL is um, a command line program, and it's the only way to use it. Uh, you, there's no GUIs for it, and you got you to be a hacker in order to, uh, yeah. <laughs> there are actually quite a few, but this one was one of the easiest I've, I've come across. This is YouTube DL slash GUI. It's an easy-to-use uh, graphical front-end for YouTube DL, but YouTube DL is also included in the package when you download it. So if you don't have YouTube Tube DL installed, it will install with, with the GUI. So um, what's really awesome is you can download a YouTube or Twitch video using different codecs and resolutions without having to use the command line. Although I'm just so used to using YouTube DL on the command line that that's probably still going to be my go-to, but it's really nice to have an easy-to-use GUI, especially for new users. 
And I test downloaded a YouTube video in multiple formats from one of our Linux Gamecast crew at Scale Videos from last year, and it worked great. You can download just the audio in FLAC, MP3, WAVE, or several other formats. And you can click, there's actually a default button to download in, in RAW MKV. So it's just really easy peasy to use and it works and it looks beautiful. And I recommend it highly. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's built in QT, so it will yeah, default uh, if your distro is properly set up. It will integrate with whatever theme and whatever um, desktop environment you happen to be running. Some of the some of the uh, lightweight distros may not have the QT bits set up out of the box, but that's easy enough to fix. What actually threw me was I thought this was just going to be like a GUI that you uh, you ran on top of YouTube DL. Yeah. New. This actually <laughs> comes with all of the YouTube DL baked in, and you yeah. can't build it yourself, and you need YouTube DL to be installed so it can bake it into the um the binary that's uh that's very nice mm. very portable mm -hmm. too because you don't need to have that installed in order to get this to work yes Girl. <laughs> i don't use um very youtube good. dl when i have to thieve our own videos because google <laughs> youtube alphabet <laughs> youtube is really what i'm ending at if I, if I want the 1080p 60 version of the video i can't not download it from the creator studio it's like best i can do is 1080p 30 you're going to wait a while before I get you that link and it's going to download. So I use 4K video downloader. Not because, no, yeah. not for any mm -hmm. reason than it's been out forever and it's what I was using forever. And I just open it. It immediately detects whether or not you have something in your buffer on your clipboard. I was like, hey, you want to download that? Yep. Get it done. And uh, into the story. But this is a great, great little project, much like Adore. Adore is a mm -hmm. non linear, well, I guess mm -hmm. really more of a linear though. If you record stuff, I suggest you go and check out Audor 6.6. It is out. A uh, bunch of new features if you want to play with it. It's what we're using to record this show. And it's nice and tight. This new release is ready for testing in so much that it's there. Go test it. But as always, kind of give it a month to settle down. Let some of the bugs get ironed out. But the official builds for Apple M1 is available. That's interesting. And we're talking about mm -hmm. Linux on M1. That's going to be a thing, too. But uh, improved axe run tracking. If you're unfamiliar with axe runs, that's like if you're a pop, click, and all that fun stuff. When we're working with Jack, all of these boxes are connected over the network using NetJack. And until recently, I would just have in the upper right hand corner a little mice type. It'd be like one, two, three. Like, I don't know where that's coming from. Who's responsible? Or um, if I have the waveforms pulled up, I just get an axe run track. This is going to allow you to like different sources. I'm like, hey, you get an axe run on this track from this thing which is kind of important. But uh, one thing I did notice, and I tested it out, I downloaded the binaries. Uh, binaries are available if you support them, or you can always just get the source. Uh, it just ate poop. It did. It, uh, man, mm. it just nuked from orbit net jack one. Like, no. Oh. <laughs> and sometimes it would start, but sometimes it's just like, no, oh, boy. not going to work. So, you know, I checked out uh, that release and compiled it just to see, like, hey, maybe something. Did the same thing. So I'm going to have to build a debug build of that and play around, maybe submit some stuff. Like, this doesn't work. But go check it out. Adur is great. It's probably one of the coolest um, DAWs available for Linux. Just huge fan of it. Comprehensive. I've seen um, the screenshots, uh, and they have done wonders in uh, keeping me away from it. <laughs> <laughs> that is comprehensive. That, 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 yeah, you get all the options. <laughs> you're going to look at what it's for. A lot of people, like, Adore is not a wave editor. You know, when you're yeah. thinking, like, I, I use Audacity to record the thing, and that's great. Like, when I need to, like, make some quick edits and stuff like that, I'm using Audacity, too. I'm using Audacity right now just to do, like, a raw recording. That's, like, the backup, the backup. This is more for when you need to, like, if you're recording a song or in our case podcast, multi you know, multiple tracks independently recorded each with their own effects and stuff like that on it. You know. It's great. Uh huge fan of it. 
Also a huge fan of all the people who support the show over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Yeah, I snuck that in. Deal Yay. with it. Those uh, are the most amazing ones. <laughs> if you don't support us, support other independent content creators. Um, this is how we pay the bills. This is how we pay for the hosting. You notice you download a podcast from us. It doesn't come from like some third party fireside or anything like that. It is all sent from our wonderfully, increasingly more expensive uh, server. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so, which doesn't sound too bad to realize. Like, yeah, we, we have over 600 gigs and warm storage online available to download. But it's there. And thanks for listening to it. Uh, if you do help us out with that, if you get an extra four quarters a week, Get access to our Discord. You also get uh, into our Discord if you sub to us on Twitch. Don't miss out on that because we are there the other six days of the week. In the pre-show, speaking of something you get as a patron, if you like this part of it, this is just the gooey middle. There's an entire show before this and an entire show after this. But back to the Discord real quick because we were talking about on last night's episode of um, <laughs> <laughs> Linux Gamecast Discord, I, I walked in about midway of... Uh, Strider going in, he's like, hey, Strider is the guy, uh, human behind Lutris. And he's like, I need this thing with a dolphin. And I was in the middle of it. He was doing it, trying to get Python to pull <laughs> variables out of the out of C+. Yep. <laughs> uh, I went and got some popcorn. And I was like, no, I'm going to read through this. <laughs> and uh, just fun stuff like that. We're in there. We're talking about it. It's, it varies and swings wildly. So that's a cool spot staying out and um really access to a bunch of stuff i like to throw it up there and we got a pre pre super shows and if you're worried about like the behind the scenes what's going on here that goes down uh saturday before linux gamecast and we stream that and we make it available in podcast format but just big thanks to everyone that does that uh if you like our merch we got stickers and stuff like that like the gosh darn heck elks i need to make a heck <laughs> Yes, you do. Heck, <laughs> Heck with the LWD is, is for logo LWW. at the back, yeah. the bottom. Yeah. yeah man. We, oh, yeah, that's perfect. Good idea, and all the other Pedro. Fun stuff. You want some LGC <laughs> or LWDW merch? That helps us out. Uh, they're not crazy priced because I'd rather you get the shirt than like us make a ton of money off of it. And it's good quality stuff. It's not the bargain basement things. Uh, what else do we? Have? We got wish lists. Uh, Mm-hmm. And speaking mm-hmm. of, if you want to pick us up something we usually got like personal things, I don't have a personal one, but I got one for the studio. That's how you end up on this wall of fantastic. You get to be right next to Linus and uh, Frank and Jason. But this week, uh, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of credit for this. I am. Oh, yeah. ah, no, you, yes. you absolutely <laughs> do deserve uh, a little bit I, of the blame for this. I, I this. want to set the stage for it. Is yeah, this is funny. Pedro's <laughs> controller. Which one was it? Your eight, <laughs> the uh, eight bit do eight bit ADS Pro. He was blaming that controller. Nothing's wrong with it, but on his uh, poor gaming performance for an entire stream. No, nothing's wrong with it, except it got about an hour and ten minutes into a stream and he it spent, died. He spent so long blaming that controller. He had to like disown a perfectly working controller to cover his tracks. That's the thing. It uh, I've. I've actually managed to pop the back, but the SMDs are so tiny. I don't trust so, myself. Oh, boy. You, you were in Discord. You were in Discord and you were thrown down. And you're like, hey, man. Yeah. Uh, why don't we I, get it? Like, I, I asked, and, I'll finish the story despite you, man. Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> you were throwing it out in Discord. He was like, hey, man, who did you ask? I think you and Daisy were talking, right? Yeah, uh, uh, I just posed the question in general. All right, suggestions for uh, X input controllers. Don't care if it's wired or wireless, just cheap ones. Go. <laughs> and Daisy uh, made some suggestions. Mir made some suggestions. You made a suggestion. Mm. This one. I did not make a suggestion. <laughs> this is where your story goes off the rails. Oh. I searched for the cheapest thing I could find at Amazon in UK and I sorted by Fugly. Oh, rainbow vomit. That's what you did. <laughs> Basically, it's like everything that everyone was saying, I was just adding to my wish list. And then uh, Darkwing uh, decided to have a look at my wish list. And uh, since that was the one you had um, recommended, which is the If You Pro 1, uh, well, he decided to get it for me, and it's like, now that Sith frog can have rainbow vomit the next time it eats you from Darkwing. <laughs> Thank you, Darkwing. And yes, yeah. uh, actually, the the frog ended up not uh, tasting the rainbow vomit because with this controller, 
I killed it on the first try. <laughs> I, I heard that the controller just plugs right in. You don't have to do anything with it. No, it, uh, that's the thing. That controller is, uh, since the chipset is one of those uh, iffy ones that lies to the PC and says that it's an Xbox 360 controller when it actually isn't, uh, it's uh-huh. expecting the operating system to send some specific bytes, some mm-hmm. specific memory addresses, which Linux doesn't, because why would it? It's like, I can see that you're a controller. I'm talking to you like any controller would. Yes, but I'm an Xbox 360 controller. Send me those bits. What bits? Uh, I actually found, I'll put the uh, the link in the show notes. And um, yeah, you need to send three specific uh, memory addresses to the controller for it to fully activate so that it works in X input mode. In D input mode, works just fine, out of the box. Mm. X input mode, you need uh, launch codes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again, Darkwing, uh, for yes. uh, that assist on inflicting. Yes. Um, <laughs> giving I, Pedro some I like work. This con- <laughs> I like this controller more now because of that. It's like, oh, you're not working properly out of the box. Oh, I'm going to make you work. <laughs> That's great. All right. So what do we get? Okay, we need to dig in real quick before we get out of here. We get one little slice of pie. That's just uh, is that mm, a cherry pie. <laughs> What's that to the left of those? That, is that just that just looks like leftover stuff? I'm like, I'm just putting it. Yeah, Are those, maybe like um, apple slices. Awesome, <laughs> dried up bananas. I mean, what do you mm. put on like uh, is that? Like mayo? Uh, <laughs> no, it's just dried banana chips. You just take them and bite them. They're, Tell you, yeah. man. I love, I love yeah, dried yeah, banana chips. Lived until you've had some sun cured mayonnaise. That's. Uh, <laughs> 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 so one thing that you know i've honestly never finished I, I still have the video and all the b-roll that i've shot for it is my stream deck you know i bought stream deck just mm. out of curiosity because amazon was like hey there's one used for like a fraction of the price i'm like hey i guess i'll try it and i did it's not the easiest thing in the world to get set up by any means it's not plug in and play and it's gonna you're gonna be doing some pip install this i'm just Put it like that, but it after you get everything set up and you, you you get it working correctly, you can put. You know, I'm looking at little Pedro pictures of my stream deck <laughs> because I want to. Uh, I'm a broken human being that's mentally scarred. Um, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> you, however, I suggest not doing that. This one thing we've been looking for is like an open source solution to the stream deck and before i was using the stream deck i was using my tablet and before that i was using a number pad this is going to be slightly better it's, it's a deck pie take a look at that hmm. it's really really nice buttons pager i do buttons. like i yeah i do and i do like the little led that shows you which was the last button you pressed that 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 that's very nice that's very nice <laughs> it's a very nice touch and it's powered by Pi. Yep. It's the new Pi um, chip. <laughs> yes. The I, don't know what, chip. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> what they call it, but it's like, the, oh, like the uh, GR8 pocket chip. Uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> the Pico Pi. Pico. Pico Pi. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's using CircuitPython, you know, for human interface. Clothes. And it's 3D printed. Uh, it's got LEDs on it. That's the thing, as Pedro said. Using the circuit Python, future plans. This is where I get interested with it. You know, I'm just like rolling down, rolling down, rolling down. Bluetooth and web sockets. This is where things get interesting because one of the reasons I never finished my Stream Deck install because I have this thing Frankenstein together using web sockets because currently the only way to control a Stream Deck on Linux is to use uh, one of the programs that captures uh, keyboard input, which is going to steal window focus. So if I'm like say I had OBS open and, or if I was in a game and I had like a switch, it's going to pop that game out of full screen or whatever. Cause it's going to think, you know, you shifted your window focus. I fixed that with some glue code and OBS web sockets and another HTTP. I, I'm running like a server for OBS web sockets tied in that tied. That's why I haven't finished the video. I'm like, I don't think anybody's going to play with it. But if mm-hmm. we could get something with the Bluetooth, keep it wireless and web sockets going direct because you got the pie there. Yep. So you could run the server to send to that. 
do it over Wi-Fi too. Um, that's where it get interesting. Now, OLED keycaps on an adjacent note are still wicked expensive. Mm-hmm. Like budget, questionable ones that would probably try to rob you at night when you're sleeping. <laughs> They're like $39 a piece. That, that's a bit much. That's you a bit just much, get, you know, isn't it? Some transparent ones and put some stickers on the inside. Or you sure. could do what the Stream Deck does. I hate to break any illusions. This Stream Deck is not OLED just keys. Just one screen. Dude, it is like the most bargain basement LCD. There's probably nine US dollars of material inside of a Stream Deck in a metal case. That was, um, but something like this, I don't know. I mean, I want like the like multi-screen keys just for fun so they can break and I replace them all the time. I, I, I do <laughs> want the, that's one of the reasons that I've always wanted one of those Razer laptops that have the uh, TD Tiny LCD yeah, and the keyboard keys. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to play with one of those so much. I, I'm not entirely sure how um, the keyboard would end up looking, but I want to play with it because ooh, we can get up to some shenanigans with this. Well, I'm thinking <laughs> of that. So we didn't have four buttons, but two. We, we could put Doom on it, Pedro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's it's, it's running a Raspberry Pi, after all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, everyone. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Uh, there's a contact button. we got a little drop-down menu. Select the right show if you got questions like that. If you want to get on the show, I'm like, hey, man, I got a project. Maybe something like this. And like, I'd love to talk about it. We'd love to talk about it with you. So uh, there's even a selection for that. And be like, hey, get on the show. Yell at us. And um, tell us a bit about your project. If you get uh, like press kits or anything like that, read. Or our spam golem will just uh, nuke you from orbit. And Mm -hmm. then I will go like months later when I'm finally going through the spam logs and watch some very, very determined people to repeat that same cycle. Best I've seen so far was 12 minutes. Time for him for some <laughs> bounce, getting bounced. Good luck with that. Oh boy. But beautiful, beautiful. we got to get out of here. Uh, you can always leave us comments on Patreon, YouTube, and all the other places that we're found. And we have a library thing at Odyssey. Yeah. If you could find it, because mm-hmm. I can't tell you where it's at. I don't remember. Um, is that it? Um, library.tv at Linux Gamecast <laughs> slash pyramid yeah. or something. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just look for the Linux Gamecast on library.tv there you go. that there you go. Yeah. you'll find it <laughs> alright beautiful people we're gonna hit them credits yay thanks again Darkwing Darkwing <laughs> for Pedro's controller yeah seriously thank you very <laughs> much for that it is uh, surprisingly sturdy <laughs> yeah it looks pretty too <laughs> yeah. I am that's kind of interesting because it does not look sturdy. No, but it, that that's what surprised me when I pulled it out of the box. It's like, oh, this is heavier than I expected. It's a, a weighs almost the same as the dual sense actually, and it mm. feels sturdy. It's just a D-pad that's not very good. But then again, nothing is as good as the dual shock four D-pad ever. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, everyone. Bye, everyone. Love you.